Hello everyone, this is Seth Itzcan from Soil for Climate, and I'm here today with a very, very special guest, Walter Yenny from Australia. He's a renowned soil uh, biologist and ecologist and uh, is doing seminars now called the Soil Carbon Sponge and uh, is going all over the world uh, lecturing on the role of soils to help improve the hydrology, uh, which it turns out that water is 95% of the climate uh, equation. And, um, and I'm with him now in Vermont as part of a seminar that D.D. Purse House has put together and the seminars are called the Soil Carbon Sponge Seminars. And you can, um, you can Google those and, and, and find them. Um, so uh, Walter, just really quickly, um, give me the, 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 the thesis, if you will, of the Soil Carbon Sponge. And then um, we're gonna focus, for this talk, uh, I wanna focus on methane and markets. Uh, I know that the typical talk is on carbon and climate and water, of course, um, but so much of you is already on the internet talking about that. I wanted to have a little more focus this time on methane and markets, but yeah. first give the introduction about the soil carbon sponge. Right, Th says thank you very much and hello everybody. Uh, as says, I'm a soil microbiologist from Australia and yeah, for 50 years I've been working in this space of soil microbiology, carbon drawdown, biosystems function, but now specifically climate and the whole resilience of landscape. And basically we're here looking at a major initiative globally, all around the world, basically how do we regenerate the Earth's soil carbon sponge, the drawdown of up to 20 billion tonnes of carbon per hectare per annum back into our soils, but not just to draw down carbon, but to rebuild the sponge because that sponge is a fundamental, critical issue for rebuilding the Earth's hydrology. And as Seth said, it's hydrology, it's water that governs 95% of the heat dynamics of the blue planet. And it is really only that water that can now safely cool the planet naturally. And so we're really saying how do we rebuild the sponge, to rebuild the hydrology, to rebuild this natural safe cooling, because only that can actually offset global warming and give us the safe future we need. <coughs> Excuse me. But we want to talk specifically about methane and what its role is in this whole natural carbon dynamics, uh, what creates methane, what draws it down, what results in the balance, how we might have disturbed that balance, and really what are our options for doing that. Now, methane is one of the carbon compounds, carbon four hydrogen compounds to produce carbon compound. And basically it's in the atmosphere naturally. And it was at much higher levels previously, but now it's basically in the atmosphere at some 700 parts per billion. It's been that level for millions of years. So it's, it's no big issue, right? 700 parts per billion. And it's been 700 parts per billion despite there having been hundreds of million, billions of herbivores grazing the earth's grassland again for hundreds of millions of years. And so the question is, hang on a minute, how come methane you know, is 700 parts per billion naturally when there's all these animals obviously emitting methane? Not just animals, but we know that we've got rice paddies, we've got wetlands, we've got tundras, and then of course herbivores, all of which are emitting methane. In fact, all animals, us included, emit methane because we've got anaerobic fermentation happening in our guts, and of course that produces methane. And why it's only 700 parts per billion is because in nature there are natural microbial processes that break that methane down and turn it back into CO2 and water. And that's really the photo oxidation of methane. Sunlight will basically break up water vapor molecules in the air, call them hydroxyl radicals, bicarbonate ions. It's those hydroxyl radicals that form from sunlight interacting with water vapor that are then very aggressive at breaking down the methane that cows may release. Okay, so basically we have a natural balancing process the photooxidation of water, which will produce these hydroxyl radicals, 
that then oxidize all the methane that cows make to produce. I think that gets a little bit. Okay, and so clearly, yeah, cows do emit methane, and we can certainly look at it just at that frame of reference, and that's true. But if we look at it at a pasture level, the pasture is also transpiring water vapor, the sunlight is breaking that down, and in a sense, the photooxidation rate above a healthy green pasture is a hundred times the methane production of the cows grazing that pasture. So we so have say, say that again for the loving internet audience. Yeah, loving internet audience. What we're saying a healthy green pasture transpiring water will result in the production of these hydroxyl radicals from this photooxidation more than able to break down all the methane that the cattle grazing it might produce, in fact, a hundred times the rate. And so because we've had this natural photooxidation process, basically we've only got 700 parts per billion, really a minuscule residual methane concentration in the atmosphere. Okay, so just to quickly sum up, so <coughs> ruminants are essential to create pasture to create the water vapor over the pasture, which creates the hydroxyl radicals, which oxidizes the methane. Absolutely. Okay. And see, this is a punchline, you see, because, okay, grasslands cannot exist anywhere on the planet without their natural symbionts, without their natural herbivores. Because if they don't have the herbivores, they just grow rank, burn, and then desertify that landscape. And you know what, let's just put this, can we possibly put this just a little bit higher yeah. uh, there so, so everyone can see it? Hi, if you're watching this uh, live, um, feel free to ask questions. We have a, a few more minutes with uh, Walter Yenny. Um, and if uh, you didn't hear the, uh, the punchline there, it was that ruminants are essential to create healthy pasture, which is essential to have proper water vapor. And the water vapor is how the methane... Um, in the methane gets oxidized a yeah. hundred times more than that's emitted by the cattle. Yeah. yeah, I wanted you to put it up a little higher so okay. people, so you can so see people me. could, okay. could, Hang on, could I can see you because you're the guest of honor. Okay. So if you're watching and you have yeah. questions, <clears throat> feel free to. Uh, um, yeah. Now, because we don't have a lot of time left, I also wanted to talk about markets. Yeah, um, can I? Yeah, yeah, take no, a, no, please, absolutely. Can I take it one yes, step yes, further? Of course. You see? And so really it is the cows managing healthy green pastures that are really the Earth's only critical means to keep this methane level down. Methane levels have gone up uh, abnormally in the last decades, largely because of fugitive emissions from gas, leaking gas wells and now from fracking. So they've gone up three, fourfold, but it's nothing to do with cows. It's all about these gas fugitive emissions, but cows have become the very, very simple patsies or scapegoats to blame for this effect. But it gets much more serious. We do have a major global methane and extinction threat because there are 15,000 billion tons of carbon as methane hydrates in the oceans. They are starting to come up and basically bubble out as gases from these Arctic oceans and what have you. And if that happens in an extreme way, we will risk an extinction, a serious extinction. And the only thing that can save you know, humanity and this planet from that methane impact are actually those green grasslands managed by herbivores in high latitude regions. Do you see? So this is nature's balancing safety net, green grasslands managed by herbivores so we will be having to thank those cows for the methane photooxidation processes they're maintaining rather than blaming them for the methane they produce. Walter, I want to thank you. Thank you so much. If, okay. you, if you're out there and you're hearing this, this is just pure, okay. pure uh, uh, you know, this is like sacred water, the words that he's saying. Um, do, do we have time now to talk a little bit markets. about markets? Yeah, so specifically, says what aspect of markets were you particularly... Uh, well, there is this concept of, of the carbon markets and then yeah. tr trying to have value in the marketplace for taking carbon out of the air yeah. and putting it in the soil. Okay, so for the last 20 years, we've been talking about can we have carbon accounting so that basically... 
people have to take responsibility for the carbon they're emitting to the atmosphere. And of course, can farmers who are drawing down by sequestering carbon get valid offsets for the carbon they draw down? And we went through this with the Kyoto Protocol and what have you. And for 20 years, we've had this talk politically to do that. We had a major milestone in 2015 at COP21 when the world 157 countries agreed that will be a zero net carbon accounting standards. And now the plans is in Warsaw, November this year, that we will have some protocols, some accounting standards, and technically, can we start doing global carbon accounting? A lot still depends on the politics, whether all the countries buy in on this, and of course, particularly America, what its position, because it's such a major player. The point is this, yes, there may be carbon accounting, and yes, when that happens, it will be up to finding methods to verify the stable soil carbon that people have put into the soil, and then, of course, getting paid offset credits for that through an international trading protocol. There's still, obviously, some details that we're not sure of, but if it happens, that will be a major boom to farmers. Our point is, though, after 20 years of indecision, we wouldn't bank on it immediately, but you should still be drawing down carbon because by doing that, you are building the soil carbon sponge, you are building the hydrology, the resilience, the productivity of your landscapes, and thereby its profitability and your capacity to buffer climate extremes. So no, you must be building soil carbon. We encourage that strongly. When there is carbon accounting, you'll get that extra bonus potentially from offsets. So do it, but I mean, basically, let's just wait and see when that carbon offset accounting comes in. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Let me just quickly say that um, um, the part about carbon markets is, uh, is an emerging conversation. And um, my buddy Carl and I just attended an event called Reversa Palooza. And it's all about trying to find, uh, you know, markets for, for carbon drawdown. Um, people feel free to ask questions online and, and we'll answer them when we can. Uh, Walter, thank you so much. It's been a Thank you very a, much. It's, it's, been a it's, pleasure. it's a pl pl pleasure as well, mine. Okay. Okay. Um, Take care. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. And let's go. Bye bye. Good. Excellent.